Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Greg Hoffman. Uh, at this point, you probably know me from one of the 1800 Twitch things that we're doing. Uh, if not, I'm the executive producer of Spirit Media. I've been with the team since uh, February of 2020, so February of this year. And uh, yeah, I guess it's my fault that this has all gone horribly wrong. I showed up and here we are. Uh, with us today, we have a couple of players uh, that you can, you've probably seen. And we also have our owner, Steve Baldwin, on the call. And uh, we're actually going to start, I think, maybe with a couple of questions for Steve. Because in the, uh, the registration that we sent out, we got a lot of questions back about the status of the league and, and some updates that Steve is obviously best suited to answer. So uh, if anybody has those questions, I would say go ahead and using the participants tab at the bottom of your screen, hit uh, participants. And then on the right side, you'll have that options panel come up and hit raise hand and you'll be able to get in line, so to speak, to ask a question. And uh, if we have some of those questions, we'd love to get Steve to answer a couple because I know a lot of you are looking for similar answers. So Steve has been nice enough to join us and answer some of them. Uh, our players today, uh, we've got two center backs with us, which is fun. Uh, we got Paige Nielsen, who was with us last year, uh, obviously had a terrific first season with us at the Spirit. She's played all around the world from Korea to a couple of different places in Europe. I was reminded how many places today uh, when I was listening to her podcast appearance on The Athletic Mindset. So if you want to learn more about Paige, recommend that uh, for sure. And uh, Paige is with us. Paige, I'll let you say hi real quick. Hey, guys. What's up? Um, I, see, I see some familiar faces. We got um, my sister-in-law in the house. Stuff oh, not nice. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. I know a bunch of you guys. Danny, uh, yeah, so I just want to say what's up and thanks for joining um, the call. Thanks, Paige. And new to us this year, she played last year in England at West Ham. Uh, she's very tall, even though you cannot see that on the Zoom call. Uh, maybe you can tell. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> you know, different, different variety of center back than Paige. Paige, sit down. Uh, Brooke Hendricks <laughs> is with us. What's up, Brooke? Hey, y'all. Um, um, Brooke went to Southern Miss, and uh, that's if you were here with us as we were starting, we're having some fun with the accent. But Brooke is an awesome, awesome person that I've gotten to know a little bit uh, since she came here, and uh, we're excited to have her on, on the call with us today. So you guys can ask her questions about playing over in Europe, uh, anything else that you want to ask, uh, obviously anything pagey, and then uh, any kind of lead questions we'll direct towards Steve. So uh, let's see. Bernie, do we have questions ready to go? Uh, let's go with Ashlyn first. All right, Ashlyn, thanks for joining the call. Um, this question is kind of for Brooke. Um, what is her favorite place to play and live? Ooh, Brooke, your favorite place to play and live. Play and live. Ooh, that's tough. Um, I'd probably have to say Italy was the most entertaining. Um, they had some great food. Um, great people. They love to dance, which I like to dance as well. Um, yeah, so probably Italy. Paige, you played a couple of places. What about for you? What's your favorite place to play and live? Uh, Australia was pretty nice. Um, that was my favorite place to live by far. Um, to play, the level wasn't very good. Um, I would say I would say here, D.C. is my favorite place to play. Yep. Um, yeah. just because we have the best fans in the world. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, if you would like to uh, ask a question, just use the raise hand feature and Bernie will be able to talk to you uh, and let you know that you're up next. So while we wait for uh, a couple of people to get in line with questions, actually, let's, let's run through for both of you, uh, both of our players, where you guys have played. I've said you played a bunch of different places. Let's get, let's get the timelines. Uh, Brooke, we'll start with you. So you're in college at Southern Miss. Take us from Southern Miss to now. Okay. Southern Miss took like a year and a half off. Then I played in the WPSL for Silverbacks. Then I went to Holland for some trials. Um, didn't make it. But anyway, went to Scotland <laughs> and then played there. Then I went to Switzerland, played there for a bit then Iceland, then Italy, which was cool because I was Champions League. Um, and then I went to England, and now I'm here. And now you're here. 
Paige, UNC to Seattle, take it from there. Well, first I went to Germany and Sweden on a couple of trials, um, but then I got drafted to Seattle and I managed to find a flight back because I didn't cancel my first flight. Um, I begged for a free flight and that's how I got back. So Seattle, um, then where else? Cyprus for Champions League, um, Australia, South Korea for two and a half years, Australia, and now I'm back. Nice. You guys weren't Champions League at the same time. You guys didn't cross, did you? I don't know. I, we I'm played Slavia Prahas in the Czech Republic. Yeah. What, what year? year? 2016. No, I think I was after her. Okay. Because, yeah. I mean, you guys could have played Champions League and not ever known. It's not like it's an intimate tournament in any kind of way, but just curious if you guys cross. All right. Uh, for our second question goes to David. Hey, y'all. This is a, I guess, a, can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a question, I guess, maybe it might be an owner question. Uh, mm -hmm. I live out in Loudoun County and uh, near Segra Field. And uh, I was there a couple times last year, uh, seeing Loudoun United. And uh, it's my understanding that there are some upgrades that were scheduled for the stadium. I didn't know if y'all had any uh, updates on uh, what the status of those uh, upgrades, if they're delayed because of the, the pandemic, or what's what's the status there? So, uh, so great to meet you. Thanks for your support. Uh, we uh, have remained in continuous contact with our friends at DC United, and all of the upgrades that they planned for the season are expected be, to be completed. Uh, really by the end of this month. Uh, so there's, there's some water features, uh, uh, concession features, you know, other, other types of things they've done from an infrastructure perspective that uh, uh, are to be in place. Cool. That's great to hear. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're excited about it. I think it's, uh, um, uh, I think it's going to be really good for our club to be playing some, some matches in, in Loudoun County. Uh, we're really excited about uh, that, that location and all of Northern Virginia and really developing that element of the fan base. And uh, we're also excited that uh, DC United is constructing uh, uh, right down the street, essentially from Segra, their new, uh, uh, training facility and my understanding is all the construction is proceeding uh, on that venue as well and we will be moving in there uh, early next year where we will be uh, co-located with with their men's pro team cool Dave that answer your question Yes, indeed it does thanks y'all awesome yeah no I know everyone's really looking forward to getting out to the facilities there having locker rooms and, and all those kinds of things that a, a true professional football club has, and we're going to have them out there. So uh, thanks, Steve, for those updates and excited to see, uh, see that come to fruition. Uh, still, of course, taking questions from everybody. It could be more questions like that for Steve or for Paige and Brooke. Uh, any questions you got, go ahead and fire away. Uh, you can get, get them in in the chat if you don't want to come on camera, or you can raise your hand. Um, actually, question for Brooke that came through the chat. Um, about playing in the EPL or playing in England, uh, are the rivalries the same on the women's side as they are in the EPL on the men's side? Um, I think so, yes. So there's, it's basically by like city. So there's like um, all the London teams kind of have like those rivalries and it's cause just like down the road. Um, it's a lot closer in England than it is in America. Um, and then Manchester has their rivalries as well, and everywhere kind of has it. Um, so, yeah, it gets pretty heated when we get to play, like, Arsenal or Chelsea or anyone like that. What was the biggest – like, what was the most intense game you played in over there? Most intense game I played in? Um, I don't – this year, Tottenham came in, and mm. um, there's actually, like, a song about it that's, like, we hate Tottenham, we hate Tottenham, right? So, like, everyone hates Tottenham. Um, so, it got pretty intense when we got to play against them. <laughs> I'd say them. Nice. Uh, again, just raise it. We don't have any hands. Uh, it looks like we have some questions in the Q&A. Um, 
but if we can use that, uh, the raise hands feature, we can get you guys on camera. Um, this one came from Ross in the, in the Q and A. Uh, do you still practice while you're sheltered in place? Any suggestions for younger girls on how to stay engaged during this time where everyone is sheltered in place? Paige, let you go first on this one. Yeah, I think we're training harder than we were if we were in season. <laughs> um, thankfully, we live with players, so we train together um, with the players that we live with. Uh, there's like so many things technically that you can do individually to work on your left foot, right foot, striking the ball. There's walls all over the city. Um, and yeah, you, we like, we burn more in while we're individually training than team training. And this is the time where you can really focus on your weaknesses. And then hopefully when team training comes, um, you're just like a much better player, more tech, tactical, technical. Um, we have like video assignments. We're watching soccer, um, kind of trying to improve our game. And we have a lot of runs thanks to our sports science guy. Um, you can look up on Google, like some runs to stay in shape for soccer players as well. And it's actually, it's kind of therapeutic and it feels like you're still pushing for something even though our season feels like out of reach. Um, and then we also, like, I, I bought a pull-up bar. I, I made my own gym in the apartment. And so <laughs> definitely keeping in shape and probably working harder than we were, we would if we were in season since we have nothing else to do. Yeah. If you'd like to see all the pieces of Paige's in-home gym, just follow her on Instagram. They appear in sporadic pieces daily. Uh, and sometimes Brooke shows up there. You never know. Uh, Brooke, what about for you? How are you trying to use this time uh, and how are you continuing to practice uh, while you're sheltered in place? Yeah, I mean, I think Paige said most of it. She um, said a lot about it, but uh, I think it's just a chance to like be creative um, in this time and just kind of think of new ways to work on something. Um, we've been trying to do like these little challenges of like juggling and like bouncing off the wall and even even challenges like physical challenges. Well, the other day we had a push-up challenge. Didn't go well for me, but nonetheless, <laughs> I got better. He was like, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did the so, most push-up. Yeah, like little steps every day. Um, just try to make little gains and keep each other motivated and mentally as well as physically. Who won the push-up challenge? Steve was asking. Um, I got 44, but today, yesterday, Dorian Bailey got 47. She's yeah, Dorian. Like, is Dor is Brooke, you're roommates with Dorian, right? Now I am, yeah. Well, she's moved in for the time being. Oh, so right, right. Is she, is she around to, like, just parade around in the background and flex to, to show off that she beat Paige in uh, the push-up challenge? She's in the shower currently, but when she comes out, I'll make her do okay, it a little we'll, we'll get a statement from Dorian Bailey later in, later in the happy hour. Uh, this question came from Brenna in the chat. Who is your favorite player to play against? And I'm going to say, let's pick – practice against which i know brooke for you you guys had some preseason practice so you said you're on a limited basis here uh until you haven't seen full squad yet but uh favorite player to play against both in practice and then in the league or in the leagues that you played against or played in hey do you want to go first yeah you can go first on this one um okay uh in practice my favorite player to play against is Ashley Hatch. Um, she's a number nine. She has good feet, and I actually don't feel bad tackling her. <laughs> I would say, <laughs> I, I would say like Rose Lavelle, but you know you don't want to hurt her. So and she's like pretty nimble, and you're like, eh, maybe I'll just like let her go. Um, so Ashley Hatch, we get into it one v one all the time. We train, and it's it's so fun. We make each other better. Um, and then in the league. I would say Jody Taylor. Um, she's English. She's the smartest forward for Seattle Rain. She's the smartest forward ever. She splits the defenders. Um, you can just tell that she grew up watching the game. It's it's her and then Kristen Press. Obviously, Kristen like. But the thing about Kristen is that she has one move and it works on most defenders. And like that's that's what I want. Like just to take her out <laughs> after that. And she always does one move, cuts it back, tries the long shot. And I know that every time. So it's really fun guarding her. Brooke? Um, I also like going against Ashley Hatch. 
but to be different. I like also like going in Sukumi. Um, she has mm. really good. And she's so like small that I have to actually work on getting super low to defend her, which is a little bit difficult for me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I like going in Sukumi because yeah, she makes me better, like Paige said. Um, and then I obviously haven't played in the league yet, but in England, I guess you could say. Uh, I like going in Spec England. She's a super striker. She's just quick, powerful, has good feet, rocket shot. So it, like, it's definitely a challenge every time you go against her. Nice. Uh, I love that her last name is England and she's- Yeah, I know, how fitting. England. It's, it's fun. Uh, all right, Sarah has a question for us. Sarah Fletcher, hello, how are you? Good afternoon. Hey, uh, good. Uh, Pippin says hi too. Uh, yes. So, I know. Super cute. Um, so it's, uh, well, first of all, okay, I'm a newer fan. I've been following the team for about two years. So excited about that. And um, it's cool to hear you guys playing internationally. I think we know soccer is definitely a, an international sport, but it's been cool to watch it become more of a women's international sport as well. Um, and so I guess I wanted to ask in your experience playing internationally and as you kind of see uh, women's soccer increasing. How do you think that's going to change the game, or why are you excited about it? Burke, I'll let you fire away first on that one. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think it's growing so much, and I think you could see it, especially in Europe and um, in the past year. Even they were having record attendances in like a lot of games that weren't even they're were just domestic games. They weren't even big tournament games, um, and. We played in like an FA Cup final, which was just incredible, which had so many fans and just we, people were writing me afterwards, like, I've never really watched a women's game before, but I'm so glad I went and like we kept gaining more. So I think it's really moving in the right direction. Um, and I think in the NWSL, it's even more to have, y'all have consistent fans, great fans that come out for every game. So I think, yeah, we just kind of got to build momentum while we can. Um, it kind of stinks about the season right now, but obviously we have to be safe and stay home. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully we can pick it back up again. Paige? I mean, she said it all. Uh, I didn't know what I was getting into by signing my first contract four years ago for like $5,000. I was like, what is this? <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Um, but now it's, it's, it's definitely gained a lot of momentum. And I think average salaries are like maybe I don't even know over 200% from that. So um, it's, it's really cool to see the game grow. And just the best part about it is like when we played at Audi stadium last year and 20,000 fans, we, after the game, when you see little girls and boys line up for signatures, it's like, you can see it in their eyes. It's their dream to like become a women's professional soccer player. And I didn't have that really chance growing up. I was like, I'm going to North Carolina. That's my dream. And then it stops. Um, so it's just, it's just an, an amazing feeling to know that um, it's going to help girls dreams come true. Hopefully one day. Yeah, for sure. Um, let me ask a, a, a I guess a, a somewhat of a follow-up to that. The actual game itself is it's it's become more international and the level has raised because obviously the U.S. has been dominant and back to back world champions still. So it's, it's still got the number one spot, but there are a lot more competitors on the world stage now and a lot more international players around the world who are extremely talented. How has that stylistically changed the game as young girls grow up in different places around the globe and take that into global football? and take those styles into, into global football. Have you noticed a change? Uh, for me, yeah. Well, one change is that people aren't doing multi-sport athletes, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, they're like, okay, I'm trying to get an edge on, on a, everyone else, trying to be like the best I can be. Um, so I can see at, from a young age, people's dedications to like go after being a professional. Now, stylistically, U.S. soccer, I had a chance to go to a coaching course um, with U.S. soccer, and they're trying to change the style. Um, they're adopting different styles from Spain and France specifically um, because they see, like, it's definitely a more technical game and more crafty, and 
um, we're not just seeing America as the athletic, like huge beast. We're actually becoming technical and smart. And, um, and I think all the intermixing of going globally is helping that, um, bringing different styles to the game. That's all. Brooke, anything you wanted to add? Yeah, no, I, I agree with what you said. And I think you can see, I think in the past, each country has kind of had like their own way they play or just the way they do things. And I think it's becoming like with more players crossing lines, I guess, like she said, um, you can definitely tell that it's kind of morphing into an elevated game because people are taking the physical prowess of America and trying to put it into their game. In England, they're tactically very aware. Um, Italy, Spain, France, they like to be a little bit more skillful and have tricks and technique. So I think with it all coming together, it's just going to elevate everyone's game and make it more competitive for everyone. Yeah, for sure. And offshoot was the word I was looking for. Offshoot. I found it. It was just midway through Paige's answer. Uh, let's go back to Ashlyn, who has another question. Um, what was my question? What, what's the, your juggling record? Your juggling record. Oh, man. Brooke, you said any new ones uh, during quarantine? Not recently. I'm not gonna lie. I've been we've been trying to do like the spirit like skills challenge. Not like necessarily just juggling. Okay. Um, that's a great question, Ashlyn. Thank you. Um, I don't know. I think I don't know. I'm I'm not like the best juggler, so maybe like 300 at one point. 400? I don't know. I haven't juggled in a long time. Like, just straight juggled. Paige? Um, when I was 16, we did a juggling competition, and I got over 5,000. But that, but that is, like, I got super tired. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, how long did that take you? It took me well over, like, 40 minutes. Um, oh, but... You don't have to do it for that long. Just do different juggling um, like challenges and it, it makes you better. Like there's no point of juggling for 40 minutes at a time. It was just a competition. Except for 10 years later, you can say that you did 5,000 once and everyone's yeah. like, whoa. <laughs> All about the competition. Yeah. So Paige, give an example of like what you would do now instead of just juggling for 40 minutes, like the combinations and the kind of things that you, that you guys do functionally do. Um, there's different things. There's this 14 ladder juggling competition where it's like your laces, your inside of the foot, outside of the foot on both feet. So that's six surfaces. Then your quads, your thighs, that's eight. Um, shoulders, that's 10. And head, 11. And one more. Your heels. Maybe back. Oh, your heels. Your heels. Yeah. Okay. And then your heels on your feet. And then you have to do that over and over and see how many rounds you can get. Um, and then we just had a challenge this last week, which was alternating juggle ladder, where you go one with your right, one with your left, one or two with your right, two with your left, three with your right, three with your left. Mm -hmm. And you do that until you can't anymore. Yeah. And so. if we have any parents on from, uh, from our youth clubs, it's actually, that one is actually our spirit skills challenge, which is online on all our social media platforms right now. So if your kids want to try to do that uh, and submit and use the hashtag spirit skills challenge, and there's some more details on all our social media pages, they can actually win a zoom call for their team and Jordan D or with their team and Jordan DiBiase uh, who did that on our page. So um, that's a fun one to, to watch. I think the highest submission we've gotten so far is someone did 40. Jordy just did to 10 to just kind of set the tone and then uh, someone went to 40. So wow. pretty, uh, Pretty impressive. Very impressive. Good night. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Any other questions lined up right now? I don't think we do. We do have a request for Kelly Piper to bring her Zoom background back. <laughs> um, I don't see Kelly's on my screen right now. I have to scroll through in a second and see what see what she's got. Um, here, I got a I got a fun exercise here while we wait for more fan questions. You guys have not played with each other yet, Paige and Brooke. Do you have a question to ask the other one? <laughs> question to ask the other one. Yeah, so Brooke, do you have a question for Paige? Paige, do you have a question for Brooke? Um, does it hurt when you fall since you're so tall? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. I've, 
I've learned the art of falling. Um, <laughs> You've told me. Tell everyone else. <laughs> my theory is, if you are about to go down, you might as well just like let everything go and just collapse. <laughs> I feel like you're less likely to get injured. Like like, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> uh, so, no, it doesn't hurt anymore. I figured it out. Thank you. <laughs> Can you tell them about the car story? Oh, yeah. So I, my friend hit me with a car one time. Oh, <laughs> casual. At least when I got hit by a car, it was by a stranger. Yeah, yeah, no. Maybe it was new friends. <laughs> yeah, it was like on purpose a little bit. Um, and she hit me a little faster than expected. And so I just kind of like rolled off. So, like I went up the hood and off the thing and just fell over. And I wasn't hurt. I wasn't injured because I just let my body go, you know? <laughs> Steve, so, I think we need to adjust Brooke's contract to not let her near that friend. <laughs> Yeah. It's now, yeah, it's now an occupational hazard. Yeah. 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 This is pre-contract. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. um, let's see. Paige. Wait, what question do you have for Paige? I don't know. So many questions. Should I ask her like a serious one maybe? If you want to. Paige is good for all kinds. It's true. Um, I feel like I know a lot about Paige already. Let's see. We're sisters. We're fam. Yeah, we're fam now. Um... What's your if someone favorite? had the under on 30 minutes for Paige to bring a prop, you hit it by about 10 <laughs> seconds. My desk is filled. We'll, mm. we'll bring my, oh, hold on. You keep thinking, bro. I'm going to bring my. I got one. What's your favorite thing about being on the spirit? Um, the girls. You guys are my fam already. We didn't have much of a preseason, but I love y'all. Oh, that's cute, right? It's like my second family, you know? Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. It is definitely family atmosphere around the organization. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's really cool to, to see you guys interact and to, for everyone to have, kind of have their parts of it, too. It's, it's really cool. All right, you guys both play the same position. You both play center back. At what point did that solidify for you in your career? Mary Lou, you can take this one. <laughs> um, actually, like, maybe three years ago, four years ago. Um, so I played midfield throughout college and like a little bit forward in club. And then I got to Rangers in Scotland and they were like, we had this spot open. We think you'd be good here. You're a large person. This will work. <laughs> like, okay. So yeah. And then I played there and then I really liked defending. So I, I guess it kind of made sense, but I don't really know like why I never tried it. Yeah. So this stuck from there. And I've played center back ever since. What in midfield, where were you in college? Were you at least a defensive midfielder or were you up in, in attack? You see, I slowly made my way backwards. Like the freshman year, I was like a forward slash attacking mid. And then I kind of went back to like, I was like number 10 for sure. And then the next year I was like number eight. And then the next year I was defensive center mid. Peggy, how, how have you bounced around, including the, the famous conversation with Richie of I'm a center back? Yeah, I uh, I was midfielder and forward most of my life. Um, I had this conversation twice, by the way. My senior year of Carolina, um, we lost our center back, our starter center back, and I wasn't playing, like, the entire game. So I was like, I think that position plays the entire game. I just want to play. So I go to the coach, Anson Dorrance, and he was like, I was like, play me at center back. Try it. And he goes, <laughs> you're not a center back. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, just real quick for background, Anson Dorrance is far and away the most successful college coach in women's soccer history. Like it's, it's Anson is like here. Hope my hand's still on the camera. It's, my, my screen is blocked. Uh, and everyone else is somewhere, somewhere down here. And these people are also very successful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was like, oh, maybe he's right. He's like, actually, let's just try it. We <laughs> We're screwed, so we need a center back. Um, and then, um, so I played center back that season and had a great season. And he was like, Paige, you're going to make it in pro. You will. You just have to play center back. Um, and then for four years, no one played me at center back. <laughs> they were like, no, you're a forward. You get after it. You're a midfielder. And I was like, okay, whatever. And then the last year, I go – I go into Richie's office, our head coach's office, and was like, stop playing me at right back. Like, 
my position is center back. It's the only way I'm going to make it. <laughs> and um, he's, he kind of laughed and he goes, ha, you're not a center back. And Rich, and Tom goes, no, do it. I, I'm, I guarantee you she'll be, she'll do well. And then Richie was like, we'll see. And then he finally played me center back for one preseason game. And, she, and then after he brought me into his office, he was like, you're right, Paige. I was wrong. You are a great center back. It's like, thank you. What, then, <laughs> say what, what made you think that you would be good at that position when you, cause it takes a lot of gumption to walk up to Anson Dorrance and go, Hey, you're, you're doing it wrong. Why did you, why were you so confident that center back was right for you? Um, Cause I can just read the game really well. I think being a point guard in basketball, basketball is my favorite sport. I was just better at soccer. Um, yeah, reading the game is is my favorite part of it. And as a 10, in college it worked because the forward like would press the ball and I would read the second pass and that was awesome. But I wasn't really that technical at the time. Um, but I'm also very strong. Um, so reading the game and being really strong, I think it calls for being a defender, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's worked. So I'm not questioning it. I'm just asking you to explain. It's worked. It worked uh. quite well. All right, uh, let's get back to a couple of other questions. These are from the chat from Sarah. How do you deal with the instability of pro sports, knowing you could be traded or contracts being what they are uh, over the years? Like Paige, you talked about uh, you're going on some trials and that very short contract you had the first time around with Seattle. Um, and, and what kind of mindset do you have to be able to deal with all that? Paige, I'll go for, back to you first. Man, I could talk about this for an hour. Um... So after college, everyone really doesn't know what they're getting themselves into. So you just kind of go with the flow. Um, I myself was struggling with some life issues. So the easiest thing for me was to go, just keep going. Um, I got like trials after trial and maybe I, sometimes I didn't make it, sometimes I didn't. People were just coming in my way and I said yes to every single opportunity. Um, you really have nothing to lose at that point, even though you might be prideful or whatever. But um, I had opportunities to like fly overseas for free. And I was just, I was learning along the way. And um, I wasn't afraid of failure or anything because it's, it's hard to explain. Like it's scarier not taking chances rather than wondering what would have been. Um, and I think that's what has gotten me here today. And um, with the instability of the league, you're just hoping that you find someone who believes in you, like coaches or owners. Um, and I found that with the spirit, obviously. And, and, and because I probably hold some value, trading, the tr like a trade could always happen. But um, I don't know. I'm just pretty positive and hopefully do my best on every team that I can and hopefully that makes it um makes me stay in one place for a little bit that's all yeah for sure Brooke yeah um obviously from both of our stories like we've traveled a lot and it's been a little bit unstable um but I think for myself I've learned so much through those experiences and I wouldn't trade them for anything um I think it, I learned a lot of like hard lessons through the trials and like not making teams and having to travel by myself and having to find jobs to make it work. And, um, but I, I don't think I'm mad about it at all. Uh, I actually appreciate it because now I have, I don't, I don't know. I can, I just feel like I've accomplished a lot of my life, even if it's been in a short period of time. And so now like, obviously you want to try to find something stable um, so I'm hoping to find that here. Um, but yeah, I think it's all about the life experience for me and just saying yes to opportunities. That's all I did really. Um, so I didn't really think about like what was happening. I was just like, yeah, I should go here. Okay. This is happening. This is happening. And then you just trust the process that you're going to get to where you need to be. Um, you should work hard every day, whatever team I was on didn't matter if they were the last place team or the first place. Um, I just know I wanted to keep getting better and keep playing because I, I love soccer so much that I wasn't really ready to give it up. So I was kind of willing to do whatever it took to make it work. Yeah, for sure. I think that's a common thread among successful athletes and successful people of being process oriented and just being dedicated to doing the right things. And you live with the results of what they are, but you control what you can control. And 
go from there. Uh, great question from Steph. Good old Steph Nacho. What's up, Steph? Uh, what made you choose the colleges that you went to? Brooke? You yeah. yeah. Well. Paige, you prepare your props. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I was a little bit weird in high school, I guess you could say. <laughs> Like, um, I need to go somewhere I don't know anyone. Um, I want to like kind of be still, able to, whatever. I'm still weird. Yeah, I haven't changed. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I wanted to be able to like break out of my shell and not be so shy. So I wanted to make new friends and do that. And uh, my parents weren't necessarily the most financially stable, I guess you could say. Um, so I wanted to get go somewhere where I could get an education and play um, for free, I guess, by earning a scholarship. So Southern Miss gave me a great offer and I like the South. So I was pleased to stay there and I didn't know anyone. And that's where I went. I wanted to play as well. Where'd you grow up? Georgia, um, Coweta County. Paige, how'd you wind up at Carolina from Nebraska? Well, <laughs> Um, ever since Mia Hamm came to talk to us since I was five, I drew a picture. I was like, I'm going to go to Carolina one day. Um, and that had always been my dream. So uh, I got offered to Nebraska and some other Midwest places like my eighth grade year. And I almost said yes. And my mom was like, um, <laughs> honey, <laughs> remember your dream. And I go, there's no way. And she was like, OK, let's let's get you to camp. And I was like, OK, fine. And then I went like my ninth grade year and it turns out they really liked me. Um, they didn't have enough money to offer me a scholarship. So they're like, get in by yourself and you're going to make waves in this program. So I was like, okay, shoot, I need to keep studying. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I had verbally committed, I guess. And yeah, it was my dream school. Like I love Carolina blue and um, I did everything to make that happen. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I think Carrie has her hand up to ask a question. Carrie, hello, good afternoon, happy happy hour. Good afternoon, thank you for having us. Paige, this question is for you. <laughs> this is my sister-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get to see the last name now, Carrie just popped up on the screen. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Paige, I was wondering if you attribute your soccer career success to your older brother's knowledge of soccer with the signature move, the standing Indian, or your younger brother who has actual soccer knowledge? <laughs> you know what? Um, my older brother could not play soccer. Um, but <laughs> whenever the ball came to him, I'll like even demonstrate it. It was like the standing Indian. So I'm going to demonstrate it. All right, we, got, we got live action page here. Watch out, everybody. So pretend the ball came to him, he'd be like, huh. <laughs> touch it, and it would be like a perfect touch. It was crazy. Anyways, um, yes, my younger brother played soccer and would dribble around with me since ever since I was like one years old. So um, I guess that you could say both of them. But it, was, it definitely wasn't Sierra. She didn't do anything. She was a baton twirler, and I was <laughs> too for a little bit, and I go, no. <laughs> No, where's the ball? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think what the real question there was, who was your favorite brother, but your sister-in-law just didn't really want to ask it that way. <laughs> I have no favorites. <laughs> the correct answer is Carrie. That is, that is the correct answer. <laughs> She's my favorite out of my 500 siblings and cousins, yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, who else has a Paige Nielsen background on Zoom? That's, that's, that's very true. She is my favorite, number one. Today. <laughs> Today. <laughs> That's the kind of commitment that we're looking for. All right. Well, again, if you want to ask uh, any kind of question, you can either go through the Q&A module. Uh, you can ask in the chat. You can raise your hand uh, using a little raise hand feature, and we'll get you on, on camera to ask directly. Brooke, do you have a question? I have a statement. Um, okay. The Book of Champion is back, if you want to say Oh, that. yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Dorian Bailey Hi. <laughs> uh, Dorian, would you like to make a statement on your push-up championship? I'm very sore today, that's all. <laughs> that's <my statement. laughs> 
Um, we're, okay, I hold on. Wait, don't don't go yet. I have one more one more for you and Paige together. What was push up champ or push up challenges and things like that? Were were those happening at UNC? Were you guys going back and forth with stuff like that there? Um, maybe more like beer pong. <laughs> that's not to say. <laughs> that's happy hour. You can say. Okay. Well, uh, we'll leave out all further details of who won, etc. But like, sure, you guys can be competitive at that. Um and. Sh- and I actually did 11 pull-ups the other day, and Dorian did 12. <laughs> I only <laughs> silent <laughs> beat. That's my goal. <laughs> we look forward to future competitions. I would like them all documented uh, as the person in charge of content. Uh, thank you. Or please and please and thank you. Right. Dorian, have a wonderful night. <laughs> Bye. Guys, we're in Bailey, everybody. Uh, never know who's going to stop by at Spirit Happy Hour. Paige, is Bailey around or is she? I can go grab her. All right, well, maybe, maybe we'll have a Bailey Feist appearance by the end of the show. I'm going to, um, okay. You're, you're going to go grab her? Okay. Uh, and we'll, Brooke, you can answer this next question uh, while Paige goes and grabs Bailey. Uh, from Chloe and Vanessa, are you thrill seekers? What do you do when you aren't playing or training for soccer? And I'm going to say that. Uh, Probably seeking thrills is no longer contractually allowed, but uh, you know, what, what, were you ever a thrill seeker? And what are the things you do now uh, to, outside of soccer to try to pass the time? Okay. Hi, Bailey Feist. Yeah, you can answer, and then we'll uh, say hi to Bailey Feist. Okay. Um, yes, I. Will... Oh. Or Brooks' computer's gonna freeze, and we'll say hi to Bailey now. Hello, everybody. Hi, Feisty. How's everyone doing? Good. How are you, Bailey? I'm good. Oh, is it Steve? <laughs> yeah, Steve. Steve's here. Um, yeah, she's getting me through this quarantine process, everyone. Bailey, the, Bailey's a lifesaver. Yeah, she makes cookies, healthy cookies. Um, what else do you do? Not a whole lot. <laughs> we just train a lot and make yeah. cookies. That's if all. she can keep up with you working out, that's enough to keep you sane. Really Bailey can do that. No, I try to, but you just but, very but. difficult. Bailey, just take the compliment. Just yeah, I do. It's awesome. Then I'm super She's sore because Paige that, is a maniac. Like, hurts the pull-ups, and I go, "Are you serious today?" And then I was like, "Okay, fine, I'll do them." So we have this like pull-up challenge, and we're all doing them, and she's the one that's motivating me. So there you go. Whoa! I did them first today, everyone. I just want. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Thank you, Feisty. Thanks for saying hi. Hey, everyone. Talk soon. Okay, bye. Bailey. Um, Brooke, you froze in the middle of your answer there. I'm not quite sure what happened. So uh, are you a thrill seeker? What do you do away from soccer uh, to, to occupy your time when we're not all locked in our houses? Yeah, I used to be a thrill seeker beforehand, um, before the contracts and such started. And I used to have a, like a dune buggy in my backyard. And I would do like donuts and try to flip it and whatnot. Um, nice. And I would do skateboard and I would do like street luge on my skateboard, etc. Oh. Uh, so, but now I try to keep it pretty calm. I'm like slightly like accident prone as Paige pointed out earlier. <laughs> um, so I try to keep it pretty chill, but I guess outside of soccer, I like to go, I don't know. I had a great time in Florida when we were there. So like kayaking, paddle boarding, Love beach volleyball. That's the best. Um, pretty much like any like outdoor type water sport type thing. Yeah. We uh, had the hardest off day ever. We kayaked, sand volleyball, spike ball, can jam. We were exhausted by the next day for practice. Sorry, Steve and our coaches and every, every. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Steve, I think we need yet another provision in Brooke's contract. And it's actually just getting her the Michelin man suit. Yeah, look at Brooke. Especially now. I'll take it. Just have her walk around in it. It'd be great. Uh, so, Paige, the question uh, while you were getting Bailey uh, was, are you a thrill seeker? And what do you do when you aren't playing or training for soccer? I'm a thrill seeker. I, <laughs> I love cliff jumping. Um, Again, none of this while under contract, just, just for, to protect, uh, protect right. the innocent this here. Is, this is when I was young. Um, when I was traveling to, like, Cyprus, Australia, I would, like, you know, surf in – not really take it seriously and I was still enjoying soccer not that I don't now because I do but I'm taking it a lot more seriously so I would I don't know I uh I longboard and rollerblade a lot um 
so, very safe when I'm under contract, not so safe when I'm not under contract. Um, All right, so Steve, we need to amend Paige's contract and make it longer so she's under contract. <laughs> right. There you go. I didn't get there. You go. Um, you want me? You want me to be a thrill seeker? Otherwise, I will go mentally insane. So, trade off. We'll give you give you thrills on the field. I'll let you play in front of twenty thousand people. How about that? That's fair. <laughs> okay. Okay. I love. I think the, thr- this. I think the thrill she's seeking is to win in the championship this year. What do you think, Paige? That's my only goal. There you go. <laughs> I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I love this question from Sarah. If soccer was like baseball and had walk up songs what would be your walk-up song? Oh, gosh. That's a good one. I'll give you a second to think, Brooke, because I feel like this is a question that Paige, like, walks around prepared for. She, like, already has it downloaded just in case they start it. She's, she's bopping to it right now. She's already dancing. Oh, gosh. Are you looking for it? Are you going to try to play it off of Spotify? Is that what's happening right now? Wait, is it me or Brooke? Yeah, I was gonna say I feel I was gonna let Brooke think and let because I feel like you're ready to go already with this. Oh gosh, I don't know. Probably the song "Move If You Wanna" by Mims because I know every word and it gets me really hype. And I performed it actually at Club Med, and everyone was super hype. Um, <laughs> can't sing, but I can rap, and uh, yeah. Can confirm you can't sing, but that's been discussed. <laughs> okay. uh, Brooke, what about you? If you had a walk-up song. Um, okay, so do you know who Stormzy is? Can't say Not that I do. Um, there's one called Blinded by Your Grace, like part two. And it's okay. like, it's pretty cool. So maybe that one. Okay. Or some sort of country song, probably. I feel like that'd be a cool playlist to, to curate. Everybody, the spirit walk-up songs. I'm going to have to, Bernie, write that down in a, uh, in, a, in a ideas folder somewhere. Put that in a sauna. That's a very inside joke, but that's fine. Uh, let's go to Eddie. Eddie's got his hand up ready to riff fire away. Eddie, what do you got for, uh, for Paige and Brooke or for Steve? Uh, Eddie's on mute. Can we unmute Eddie? Yeah, my, mine's a defensive question in general. I was just wondering, is there ever a situation where a defender, like one specific defender, will be asked to cover an offensive player throughout a game, kind of like how a, a corner in football covers a, lo- a wide receiver wherever they line up? Peggy? Um, or is that too hard because, like, you know, the positions are all spread out and you cover a specific zone? Yeah, yeah, it's a bit too hard. It kind of throws the entire shape off of the team. Um, it starts from the front, blocking passing angles and stuff. But I think there are a, there are some players where you're like, okay, if she gets any bit of space, you have to get on her. Like, don't let her get space if she's in your area. But when she goes across the field, you have to talk and be like, Sam, Sam, she's coming, she's coming, because you can't really leave your spot. Because one player, if the other opponent, the midfielder, has the ball and someone's coming on your back shoulder, but this player is moving that way, then you have to do kind of two jobs. So um, being a center back, I think communication is the most important piece. Um, it's, not, it's not really following players, but it's staying um, disciplined in your shape. Could obviously the one situation where you have man marking is on set pieces. Is there a time where you're like, hey, on this set piece, I'm always going to guard or I'm always going to match up with player X? Yes, yes, for set pieces, yeah. Um, we do we do a mix. We we match up with players and we also um, do uh, we mark space. So it's half and half. And actually, sorry. Uh, when people are going down and are about to cross it, that's when you, you grab a player. Um, you don't want them any space in the box because they can get a free header, especially because, like, me, Sam, Tori last year, we're all really short, so you have to put a body on them. And then we signed Brooke. <laughs> Yay, tall people. Savior. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steph's got her hand up. What's up, Steph? Okay. Am I muted? No? I don't nope, know. nope. Oh, okay. We can hear you. So, Paige, what were you thinking in this photo that I took of you? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see this. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Probably the chicken nuggets for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> it's about That's around 1130 where I'm like, ooh, I'm hungry. I'm ready for lunch. <laughs> yeah. 
What's your go-to dipping sauce? <laughs> um, <I'm laughs> hey, this is an important question, all right? These are, this is a massively important question. Do we have a restaurant in, in particular that we're, we're talking about here? Well, I'm from Nebraska and we um, homemade a lot of it and it's just like special barbecue sauce. It's like sweet Texan barbecue sauce. It's my favorite. Well, you missed my birthday, so I'll be sending you my address so you can send me some. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Nebraskan homemade barbecue sauce. Yep. If there's leftovers, I'll take some. Brooke, do you have a favorite chicken nugget dipping sauce? All right. I think I'm a bit um, biased being from Georgia. Chick-fil-A. Chicken, yeah. Chick-fil-A nugs with some Chick-fil-A sauce. That like is actually the barbecue? correct answer. You're right. Thank you. What? That is do, do you like the, the honey roasted barbecue sauce there? I do. <laughs> it's a good I one. like all the sauces. I'm not going to lie. Again, I'm biased. I also like level up if you want. Get the grilled nugs. Oh, the grilled nugs are salad. Sauce. A little bit of ranch. Shake it up. And it's delicious. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to sleep Brooke. really good tonight now. Oh, I'm that. so happy. I forgot about the raisin cane sauce. Ooh, that's good too. That stuff is magic. How upset would Michael be with this conversation? Um, not very. Grilled nuggets. I'll take full responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we got time for, what time is it? Oh, we got only like five more minutes. So we can get maybe one or two more questions in if anyone wants to get in real quick. Uh, let's go to Alexa. Oh, hi Paige. It's oh, Alexa. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have um, a question for um, <laughs> both of you guys. Um, my question is, what is your diet and how do you guys stay motivated to stay on it? What a question on the heels of the last question. Yeah. Well, Paige, what's your actual diet like? Because you're pretty, you're pretty strict. And Brooke, I know you, you are too. You guys take this stuff seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I have routines. And I didn't do this when I was a kid, by the way. Like, usually I can eat whatever I want. But um, with that being said, if you're serious about soccer, then it's something to think about. So I appreciate it. Um, like in the morning, <laughs> I'll just go through my daily. Um, in the morning, I have like a couple of egg whites with spinach and mushrooms and a piece of toast um, or two pieces of toast. And then I train, have a smoothie um, and then eat lunch, which is like rice, chicken and veggies or fish, rice, veggies or sweet potatoes, basically all the main food groups. Um, and then I have a snack like rice cakes at 3 p.m. Um, rice cakes, another smoothie uh, beef jerky. Um, and then I have dinner, which is the same thing, like a meat and then a carb and then a lot of vegetables. I incorporate vegetables in everything I do. So, and then if you're hungry at night, I don't know, a snack, like popcorn or something. Brooke, what's your, your daily like? Um, pretty similar in like the type of schedule. Uh, in the morning, I like to have oatmeal with some like maybe banana or fruit of some sort. Um, I really love as a snack apple and peanut butter. I think it's delicious. Um, I also love beef jerky, big fan. And lunch, yeah, just like um, a lean meat, vegetable, some sort of carb, try to keep it, I don't know, a bit sweet potato or yeah, whole grain pasta, whole grain toast, something like that um have a snack again uh, and then dinner same thing again um i really like i like having like a higher protein diet so i'll add protein shakes in <laughs> i need all the protein i can get i don't like i'm not blessed with muscles like Paige. i have to work <laughs> hey this extra for those i work hard i know you do i have to work hard as well that's the problem like it's just it's a lot anyway so my protein helps that and then um, for dessert, so I have a big sweet tooth. So the way I like try to deal with it is I have like a square of like the dark chocolate, like the little bar, like I'll have a, one or two of those, or I'll have like yogurt with some granola or something, something like that. Nice. A lot of food, but that's, uh, you need a lot of fuel when you, get, you work as hard as, as these guys do.
Lex uh, trains like four times a day sometimes. So she needs she needs food. <laughs> just eat eat everything. Yeah. Just be on the seafood diet. Seafood, eat food. Yeah. yeah. I like that one. Um, all right, let's wrap up actually where we started. Let's go back to Ashlyn one more time. What was my question? What you got, Ashlyn? Um, um, what's your favorite host Richie story? What was that one more time? What's your favorite that? Coach Richie story. Oh, your favorite Richie story. Oh, gosh. Collins, you big dumpling. <laughs> oh, Richie's on here? <laughs> no, that was, uh, I have the uh, Collins, oh, well, that's scary. button I'm on scared the board. Anything. You never know where Richie's going to show up. Um, who wants to go first? I mean, I don't really have too many yet. I don't have too many appropriate ones yet. <laughs> that list is not going to grow. You might as well go with yeah, what you got. I'm full on those. Um, I don't know. I guess the first, my first impression of Richie, uh, he picked me up from the airport. Uh, and I, like my mom came with me because that's what moms do. They want to be there and whatever. <laughs> so he was already making fun of me about my mom coming. He's like, is she going to tuck you into and all this stuff. And I get there and we got, we landed early and he's like, the first text he sends was like not anything like welcome or anything. It was like, you better be this fast on the field too. And I was like, oh, okay, hi, nice to meet you. Like I've never met him in my life. And that's what he said. So that's my that's first funny. Richie impression. That is very Richie of him. Yeah. Paige, you got a year's worth. Pick one. Uh, oh gosh, there's way too many. Um, there's, okay. Okay, two. One was in our Chicago game um, when he was chasing after a ball and it was pouring rain and he slips and like basically tears his quad. <laughs> and we, at that point we were losing like maybe two to one, three to one. And I look over and I was pissed. I was like, really right now, <laughs> right now you have to fall like that. And, um, and I think Steve actually fined them for that a hundred dollars for our team pot. It was, it was the best moment I think of the entire season but um anyways he still doesn't have a quad which just sucks so it actually isn't that funny but um he was actually injured and then my other favorite story was this is like kind of depressing but not a lot of people break me down and <laughs> one practice he just kept like like there's a knife going through me it was just like one thing after another and um we were yelling back and forth because that's, you know, you're passionate and stuff. And this is, I don't know why I'm, I'm sharing this, but it was the only time where I like broke in practice and I go, wow, you won Richie. <laughs> like wow. I, usually I win, but he won. Um, he like kept making me do the same thing over again, over again. And I literally couldn't cause I was shaking, I was shanking everything. And I was like, I know that I can play. Why are you making me do this? Um, anyways, so he broke me. Um, after that day, he had no power over me. So that was my, that was one of my favorite days. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, you want to, you want to end with a Richie story to, to close us off for the night? I, I think my favorite Richie story is going to happen later this year when we have a fan, you know, fan group, uh, decide, have the fan group decide what he's going to wear on the sideline that game. You know, we'll, we'll see a little bit of cre creativity in terms of what uh, he might look like. I'd say the other favorite thing was when we found the, uh, the Buddy Hackett lookalike. Oh, picture. that is so Here good. Go. Um, yeah, isn't that funny? I don't know if we have that on deck that we can share real quickly. If, if that's like in an asset folder that Bernie or Chad can get quickly, but it is, if you go look up Buddy Hackett, if you, if you don't know who Buddy Hackett is and uh, it, the add a beard and uh, you, it's basically Richie. It's fantastic. Um, so with that, we say thank you uh, first and foremost for joining us uh, again. These are always really, really fun and, um, what's kind of been cool is we've seen a lot of the same faces to, to see the questions start to change a little bit. There's, um, obviously some questions you just want to get to know the players, but, uh, the more we do these, the, we're getting more creative and getting, I think a little deeper and getting, getting more comfortable, just telling stories and having a good time. And it, it's a good way to spend a Friday night as we're all cooped up in our house. So, um, 
I really appreciate everybody coming in and the organization appreciates everybody sticking with us. Uh, obviously, we desperately wish we were going to be at Audi Field tomorrow. It sucks that we're not. And um, there's not really much more to add other than that. Uh, we're going to do our best to, to keep connected with everybody, though. And that includes a pretty fun match replay tomorrow. We're going to rewind to the season opener last year. So Paige's first game with the Spirit. Also, Richie's first game with the Spirit. And Richie's going to be on the call with us tomorrow. So if you haven't taken in our match replays yet, they're a lot of fun. They start at noon on Twitch. You go to twitch.tv slash Washington Spirit or use uh, the Twitch app on whether it's your phone or your Apple TV, whatever it is. And you can check that out. Uh, and Richie will be there. Andy Sullivan will be there. And one of our rookies, another center back, Kaya McCullough, will be there. So it's going to be a lot of fun to rewatch the season opening win last year with them. Uh, Richie Burke show on Tuesday, we'll have Jordan DiBiase and Tegan McGrady together. Uh, and then we have a very, very cool podcast planned for Wednesday. We're not ready quite to announce who the guest is going to be yet, uh, but it is going to be really, really cool. And it plays into one of our players uh, obsessions and hobbies. So uh, it'll be cool to see her in that element as well. So we'll see you for all that stuff. And then hopefully we'll see you guys right back here next Friday. Paige, Brooke, you want to say anything on the way out? Peace and blessings. Appreciate y'all. Um, yeah, that's it. Coming in. We appreciate it. It's good to see all y'all and I can't wait to meet everyone. Yeah, we appreciate everybody. Stay safe and we'll see you all very soon. Have a good night. Bye. Right, thanks. Bye. <laughs> Mark, Mark McGuire, Lost People. Hi. <laughs> Hi. You guys did a great job today. It was really fun. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Uh, if you're still on and you can see uh, at TJ Moore, Chad's uh, thing, he's got the Buddy Hackett picture up. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's awesome. All right. Bye, guys. Have a great weekend. See you soon. You too. See ya. Yes. <laughs>